and welcome everyone welcome to another preview this is metal canyon and we will be previewing a new and upcoming game called chaos reborn and when i say we i of course mean myself and none other than the creator of xcom mr julian golop julian welcome hello it's a great pleasure to be here now we will be, as I said, previewing Chaos Reborn, which I believe is the reboot of your old ZX Spectrum uh, Reborn game. Yes, this was based on a game I made 30 years ago called Chaos, which was a game, as you say, for the ZX Spectrum. And um, now the new version, we've got online multiplayer, which is what we're playing now. And it is a prototype, by the way. So, you know, most of the graphics are placeholder. There's no animations in here yet. Uh, there's only a small set of spells implemented, but it is a functional, playable, and fun game. And actually, I am going to, right this minute, try and summon a dwarf. Let's see if it works. Oh, but it fails. <laughs> but it fails. That is each very spell, unlucky. Each spell has a, a casting chance, so some of the uh, weaker spells are easy to easy to summon. A uh, dwarf is normally relatively easy. That should be, you know, it's an eighty percent chance. Um, but some of the more difficult spells uh, require, you know, maybe twenty percent chance to to actually summon. Okay. So I've ended my turn, and it's over to you. So as you can see, we have um, two wizards here. The one on the left is my own. The one on the right is Julian's. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, the goal is to kill the other wizard, not necessarily all the monsters he spawns. Exactly. And uh, we do that by casting offensive spells, defensive spells, and also various uh, monsters. The percentages you can see on the right means uh, how much of a chance I have to cast a certain spell. So, uh, for a start, let me try summoning this. Probably not the best idea, but um, we'll see. I'm very green at the game still. So these are all the spaces I can cast the spell in. So I'm summoning an elf and actually got it to work. Um, now, right. there's nothing else I can do because the summon monster does not get a turn yet and I've already cast it with my wizard so I cannot move and I'll just uh, end my turn. Now I still don't have any creatures so I will try and... Oh, let me see. This is, this is not... Okay, I've got a goblin. Let's try and get this one. It's, it's even easier than the dwarf so I'm relying this one to work. Great. There we go. He's a chaos creature. So, um, if we're going into the chaos and law realm of things, you can see up here it says law plus 2%. We can probably elaborate a little bit on that as well. Yeah, so each creature is either law, neutral, or chaos. And actually, the same for, for the other spells as well. And if you cast a law spell, it will push the balance towards law, making law spells more easy to cast. And the same with chaos. If you cast chaos spells, it will push it in the direction of chaos, uh, ultimately making chaos spells easier to cast. So you can use this as part of your strategy to um, build up your forces and push the balance so that you can summon the, the, the more difficult to um, cast spells, such as red dragon. Oh, oh my goodness, that was, that was an early attack. <laughs> <laughs> the elf is, as you can see, got a good ranged combat attack there, which is, which is nice. Um, and it's put me in a difficult position. <laughs> now, what I could do is summon a Pegasus, which is a glorious magical beast whose main role is in battle is to bear its wizard master through the air. Which is really cool, because you can not only uh, summon monsters to fight for you, you can actually... Well, when it does happen, when you don't fail a spell, you can actually mount them with your wizard and ride them. Uh, let's end the turn. Again, uh, just so we can repeat this, this is very, 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 very early build. Uh, none of the uh, animations are still in. Uh, all the graphics you can see are placeholder. So please bear in that in mind. Now I'm going to take a, I don't, a bit of a risk because I don't have any really defensive... Uh, spells. I'm going to try and summon an elephant to see if I can get this one. Uh oh, I hope we're not going back to Rome. The, all the elephants will trample me. <laughs> okay. Oh, <God. laughs> okay. So, um, 
we we just jumped straight into uh, gameplay, but maybe we should also elaborate the whole idea of uh, Chaos Reborn. I've read on the Kickstarter, for which uh, I'll also uh, send the links into the description and also for the official page down below. Um, but Chaos Reborn will be both a uh, large single player as well as a multiplayer game. Yes, that's correct. It will have a huge single player element to it, which is very RPG based, but it will have procedurally generated realms that you can explore, and each region in the realm may contain enemy wizards, which you can fight, and um, each battle will generate, again, a procedurally generated arena, a bit like this one and the, the NPCs themselves are also generated, so you'll have quite a variety of experience as a player. Okay, I'm going to cast this, which will probably... No, it didn't fail. Excellent. That's quite a powerful creature, and I can also ride it, and it does fly, I believe. It does indeed. So, um, I've read that not only the maps will be procedurally uh, generated, but what is interesting, also the items you can get, the appearances. Yes, there's, there's lots of artifacts and uh, wizard equipment like your robes and your staff, your hats and you know armor and elaborate helms. These will be procedurally generated in terms of their appearance and their stats. And you will find them distributed in the realms as you explore them. So this means that uh, in practicality there will be hundreds if not thousands of different items and weapons you can equip. That's correct, yes. And each one of those can be leveled up individually. So what Julian did over there is he summoned a, uh, def well, offensive spell, I would guess, also yeah. defensive, which is a sword, which I believe you said that is quite powerful. Yeah, so it's, it's now turned my wizard into a powerful close combat creature. I can ride my elephant into battle, and my sword is has a very high combat value, so it can be used to kill creatures more easily. And um, I'll probably try and... Oh, my elephant's five. The elephant's very tough. Of course, you have to remember that having done that with a sword, it's also very risky, because um, if the wizard dies, of course, it's the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how will this work? I have, um, I'm now riding my manticore, and I can also cast a spell. So how will this work for the player, for example? The wizard will be his avatar, basically his main character uh, that yes. you will be will, will there be leveling up like uh, RPG yes. stats yes yeah, so your your wizard will level up but the, the the main thing that happens with leveling up is that it allows you access to to high level equipment um, and it will um, gain you also access to higher level realms because each ah. realm also has a level okay yeah. And in the higher level realms, of course, you will find some more interesting stuff, like more interesting spells and rare spells and rare artifacts and equipment. So you will be um, omitted to uh, various realms before you can level up? Yes, so you'll be limited at the start to, mm -hmm. to what you can explore. And so as you progress, there'll be, um, well, there'll be different types of realms with various types of uh, enemies and environment types and it will uh, add variety as, as you progress. Now I'm just trying to consider what <laughs> spell to cast because um, Manticore is pretty powerful and I could try attacking close combat but it's very risky so I probably really want to build up my forces so I'm going to try and cast something called a Tangle Vine. Oh no which will give me some protection. It is a dense, chaotic growth that will block non-flying creatures in line of sight for ranged attacks. Yeah, so I want to try and, what I want to try and do is, is stop your elf shooting at me, <laughs> ideally. And the manticore because it has a ranged attack. Yeah. We should I also... I, yeah, I sorry? Get, so I don't want to block myself off, though. That's the only problem. But what I'm going to do is... I'll just put it like that. We should also probably mention that even though I attacked... Oh, lovely. Um, we should probably also mention that even though I attacked his elephant several times and it hasn't died, there are no health bars. I didn't take health away from it. Uh, if I look at my um, elf here... I can see attack, defense, movement, agility, magic resistance, and victory points. And the attack, basically, um, I believe, denotes how much of a chance I will have 
to attack a particular enemy with particular defense. Yeah, so your, your percentage chance to, to kill a creature is the ratio of your attack to his to his defense. And there are no, as we said, health, bar, uh, health bars, it is simply no. fail or kill. Now, the other combat is absolutely brutal, mm -hmm. and you can't rely completely on anything uh, succeeding in attack, but you also can't rely on anything completely to, to defend either. So it's all a question of being uh, weighing up the probabilities and trying to improve your chances where possible. So let's try yeah. this. Uh, this is never going to work, but let's try anyway. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that is a red dragon. And uh, we can still move, of course. I could move all the way over there and attack, but that would also mean he would attack me in his turn, and he's got a magical sword. So I think the safest option would be so far over here if I'm if I'm going to be on the offense, which is probably stupid because I've just um, uh, just done a red dragon, so I have the upper hand, yeah. and you can't you do... You don't have to take any risk at the moment. You're perfectly safe at the moment because you're on your Manticore. But I have to do something about that dragon. And I could try disbelieving it. I could suspect that you've cast it as an illusion, which is an option you've got with all creatures. And if you summon a creature as an illusion, it has a 100% chance of being cast. Uh, and illusions have all the characteristics of, of real creatures, except that they're vulnerable to a wizard's disbelieve spell. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to try casting Disbelieve on your dragon with the suspicion that it might actually be not completely real. No! <laughs> <laughs> My and poker it face! And it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That is, um, that is going to be quite a big part of the strategy, isn't it? Bluffing. Yes, absolutely. And you tried to bluff me, but you failed. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, my list of spells is getting shorter. And this is because for every combat scenario, you only have a limited amount of spells. Which also brings me to another point. Um, in the full game, you will be able to fully customize the spell selection. Yes, you'll have a constructed mode for the game which will, in multiplayer battles, be able to bring in any spells from your spell library. And in the single-player uh, Realms of Chaos mode, which is the RPG mode, you will always have this uh, opportunity to, to construct your spells before going into battle. And uh, the, the mode we're using at the moment is completely random spells on either side, and you will still be able to play in this mode in the final game. Um, but it's, you know, it's not the only, uh, only mode that's available to you. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Elephant. You killed my elephant with a, a magical attack. These are quite powerful spells, and um, they don't have any range limit. Ah, darn it. Oh, you could have killed me there. You could have done it. And the elephant, being a neutral creature, is a little bit vulnerable. <laughs> nicely done. Oh, God. <laughs> very, very, very nicely done. I think you did exactly the right thing there. And you finished me off pretty quickly. <laughs> For the record, of course, this is my first win against Julian Gollop, and I had two absolute defeats before I got yes. trampled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you've obviously gained enough experience to, to play it reasonably well, which is great. So, as you can see, even though the game is in um, a very, very basic state, at the moment, it's uh, incredibly fun, and actually involves quite a lot of strategy. Um, for example, as we said, the more law spells that are cast, the law here will increase, which makes them, which makes law spells easier to cast, and vice versa with chaos, for example. The uh, neutral spells don't really get affected with that, but we said there are downsides to neutral spells. Yeah, so a lot of, all of the neutral creatures, apart from the green dragon, um, are relatively weak against magical attacks, and it's uh, otherwise a lot of the neutral spells are quite quite powerful um, but you have to consider the the interactions and the synergies of all the spells so in this case uh, okay you have it's your turn and you try to summon an elephant Darn it. failed it's a difficult creature to summon at the start <clears throat> I am going to try and play it a little bit differently this time I'm going to start with 
a magic sword. Let's see if it works. Okay. Okay, it succeeds. I have my magic sword. Going all offense. Let's see what we can do. We can... I have this spell, which is excellent. Of course, I'm not going to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> this is currently randomized, I believe, yes. <clears throat> the spell list. Yes, it is completely okay. randomized, yeah. Uh, so we could go for an elf, of course, to do some ranged attacking, but the elf is not that powerful, I believe. It's not hugely powerful. It's, it's very good because of its ranged combat attack. And the other thing you need to take into account, we're at law plus four percent at the moment, so you have yeah. a little bit of a bonus for, for summoning an elf, which is a law creature. As you can see, I have a 44 percent chance of casting this centaur, not just uh, 40 percent. So let's try to cast it. Yes! Oh, now that is a serious threat to me. I'm going to have to think very carefully how I'm going to protect myself. Um, apart from the zone going into law or chaos, will the player be able to buff his character up with items and increase the chance of casting various spells? Yes, uh, your wizard staff will have a certain power and special abilities and some of the abilities the staffs relate to, to increasing the casting chance of spells. Uh, some of the abilities are, are in themselves quite powerful spells, so it's, uh, it depends how you want to play the game, really. Mm -hmm. How will one discover spells? Will there be spell scrolls from loot? Will, will it be by leveling up? Well, spells come from spell books, and to some uh, extent you can, can purchase these in, in towns and citadels that you explore in the realms. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the case of more rare spells, you'll have to win them from wizard lords or, or even wizard kings. And to win those from, from defeating them in, in battle. Uh, th those will be NPCs? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, actually, not all the time. Sometimes oh. they can be player, uh, player characters who are, are being played in an offline AI mode. Ah, so this works by... Uh, do you ever have to play multiplayer for your character to be online in AI mode? No. I mean, if you have... Uh, achieved the rank of Wizard Lord, you can configure your wizard and it can be a, uh, a Wizard Lord for other players to encounter in realms. And that will happen offline. <clears throat> so, a lot of the questions today, for example, we know that um, almost every game that comes out today has some sort of multiplayer component to it. Yes. But some people always prefer not to have the social interaction always on. Um, I believe the game will be able to be played completely offline. It can be uh, played completely offline. Not all the modes will be available to you, mm -hmm. but there will be a substantial amount that you, that you can do, yes. But there will be a lot more to do online, of course. There's a lot more to do online, yes. You, okay. You've not only got some of the, the online realms of close mode, you've also got um, multiplayer tournaments and multiplayer rankings for for. Uh, rank battles, and you've got a guild system as well. So, um, the the player will be getting items both offline and online. Uh, for items, for your online character, you can only get them while playing online because they are everything is server side. In ah, that case. of course, everything is server side. So, the single player realms of chaos exploration mode is actually an online mode, even though you're playing it single player. Um, the commands are sent to the server and your uh, character is stored on the server side. Okay. There will be some uh, offline realm modes, but they will be um, not accessible from your online profile, if that makes sense. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, what is that creature, that white? Is that a unicorn? That is a Pegasus. Ah, Pegasus. And it is a creature my wizard can mount, which I'm just about to do now, and um, <coughs> I can actually then move him, so I'm going to try and move him to safety, actually, <laughs> so I'm getting a bit worried about your stampede of creatures coming my <laughs> way. Um, we also, <coughs> excuse me, we also completely forgot to mention the uh, abilities of um, illusions. Now, in most of the games, you expect, of course, aha! I failed to summon it. You expect an illusion to simply be that, a bluff. But in this game, 
It's not. It's an actual part of your army, which can attack, it can take damage, yep. um, it can perform everything a normal creature can. However, it is completely vulnerable to disbelief spell. Yes. Yes. And that's um, where the strategy is. Yeah, and each wizard has disbelief by default, and it's you know it's a permanent spell, it's a permanent ability, if you like. So I can cast it however many times I like. That's right, but of okay. course, if you do cast disbelief, um, and you cast it on a creature which turns out to be real, in a way, you've, you've kind of wasted an action. Exactly. You've wasted an opportunity to do something else. So if I cast this skeleton, ah, <laughs> darn it. Now, why I tried casting a skeleton, um, I have a zombie here. And because the zombie is an undead creature, uh, undead creatures can only be attacked by other undead creatures, a wizard equipped with magic weapons or spells. So this means that these, uh, this uh, zombie is completely invulnerable to this uh, elf here. However, of course, not invulnerable to Julian's spells or the sword. Yeah, correct. However, I'm not going to get close enough to, to, to try and attack your zombie <laughs> just yet. Uh, so let's see. Let's move you over here. And attack. Ah, darn it. Had a 50% several times now and I'm failed. Yeah, the elf and the centaur have been shooting each, at each other. <laughs> Neither has um, prevailed yet. Go well, the line's coming up. Line is fast, but the line's got a strong attack as well. So this is also pretty worrying. Go forth, my lion. Now, now I've got an interesting decision to make. I'm not entirely convinced that all your creatures are real, so I, I'm, I'm oh. relatively safe at the moment. Uh, they first are all thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and shoot at your lion with my elf, because it's a bit easier to, to kill than the centaur. Okay, that failed. The lion eats now, the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to cast Disbelieve, and I'm going to cast it on your centaur, because I'm just not convinced that's real. Oh, but it is. <laughs> but it is. So I have wasted my action there, and I am going to try and run into safety. So I'm going to fly up behind the tree on the high plateau above there. Yeah, the uh, the really interesting about uh, thing about rideable creatures is that you can see Julian there cast a disbelief on my centaur, but then also had um, an action free for his pegasus, which is great. So the pegasus and the rider are two separate entities. They can do stuff on their own. It doesn't yeah. use up an action. That's correct. All right, let's uh, try to get rid of this thing. There we go. And you may notice that my elf disappeared in a puff of smoke, which <sighs> indicates an that it was an illusion. <laughs> I was wondering uh, if I should use it, but <laughs> uh, I said no, it wouldn't be the first yeah, creature. It was an illusion, so if, if the creature sinks into the ground, it means it was real, but if it just vanishes like that, it was an illusion. Well played. Okay, let's see. I could... Uh, for this, I need to be closer, but this is an excellent spell. It's horrendous. Julian has used it on several occasions against me, and I hate it. But I would love to use it against him. Um, a shadow wood. No. This is a magic attack. Well, this is never going to work, but we can always try. Ah, wouldn't. Manticore. Yeah, that's a very powerful chaotic creature. That's a low casting chance. Um, now, I've still got a bit of a problem here because you are dominating in terms of number of creatures, but I do have this magic sword, and I'm kind of wondering whether I should make use of it. Okay, what I'm going to do, it's a risky one here, but I'm going to take a chance. Uh, I'm going to fly over here with my Pegasus. I'm then going to actually attack with my wizard. I'm not going to cast a spell. So I've got a massive 82% chance uh -oh. of killing that zombie with my magic sword. Oh no! That was my favorite zombie! Yeah, and now <laughs> you need to be worried because your creatures, uh, what your remaining creatures, are far away from your wizard, and your wizard is now vulnerable to an Indeed. attack from me. However, one thing you can do is, is launch a, an initial attack with your centaur, and if you manage to kill my pegasus... Darn it! Uh, well, I'll say, if you had managed to kill my Pegasus, you <laughs> might have been able to do something to, to attack my wizard. 
with your wizard. Right, now I'm in deep trouble. However, I do have this nasty, nasty spell. Oh, the gooey blob. <laughs> this means this I can still get attacked. Um, the Pegasus is rooted in place. Oh, ah. never mind that. <laughs> The blob killed the Pegasus. Yeah, the blob, uh, the gooey blob is a really interesting spell because you can you can cast it on top of an enemy like you did, and it will then spread and engulf other uh, creatures as it spreads. But it, it won't spread on your creatures. We should... And as you can see, any creature trapped in the blob blob can be attacked by it. So your blob has killed my Pegasus, and now my wizard is stuck in the blob. And this is doubly and, dangerous for Julian, yeah. because if it didn't kill the Pegasus, it would only have rooted him, and Julian would still be able to dismount, take two yes. uh, spaces, and attack my wizard. So this has been enormously um, problematic for me. My wizard is stuck in the blob, he can't move. I need to think about what can I do to uh, get myself out of the situation. Surrender. I could cast a creature, and then next turn the creature can try attacking the blob, which is sticking me down. But I do have something I can try, which is a little bit more desperate. But I, I think if, if this fails, then um, you will probably win the game next turn. But if I succeed, okay, it's, it's kind of 50-50. Oh, no. I risk it. It's a magic bolt direct attack. Uh, should I go for it? Yeah, I'll go for it. Oh, oh but you survived. <laughs> but you survived. That was so yes, lucky. As you can see, the uh, blobs are spreading. Now I think I am done for. Now it's just a question of who kills him. Oh, there we go. No, you didn't. But you can see how close uh, these battles are. Even though I was dominating for most of the battle, I could have easily died there at the end. Yeah, and uh, it's well, well played to use the goo blob at that point. Um, but yes, you were taking a risk and I was taking a risk and perhaps perhaps <laughs> we probably could have played it better. Okay. Um, so going back to the actual concept of the game, uh, there will also be co-op modes available. Yes, that's right. There'll be co-op in the, in the RPG realms of chaos mode. So as you're exploring through the realms, uh, fighting wizard lords and wizard kings, if you have a particularly nasty battle that you want, you know, want to do uh, with a particularly tough opponent, you can ask a friend to help you in co-op against the enemy. Uh, does that mean against uh, an NPC or a human yes, enemy? Yes, it will be against an NPC, okay. so it will be co-op against an NPC. In the uh, multiplayer modes, there are um, team-based matches as well, so you can do co-op uh, modes where you've got two versus two or two versus two versus two and, and these matches are in fact uh, great fun. Now there the uh, AoE spells would be absolutely crazy <laughs> because you would have so much stuff on the uh, on the battlefield. Yeah, there, there does tend to be a more interesting build up of forces for sure. Now I've got to seriously consider what is going to be useful for me in this situation. Let's, yeah, let's do this. Let's start with the goblin. Okay, it's a goblin. It cannot, I believe, hurt my skeleton. No, the uh, skeleton is undead. Yes, but it can get in the way. Uh, let's see what we can cast. Now I have different spells again. Unfortunately, no blobbies, which are quickly becoming my favorite spell <laughs> so far. I do have this spell, which is very nice defensively. Uh, let's see. What is this? Oh. Ah, now these ones can actually attack. Okay. The, I'm talking about the shadow wood. I, I, I might yeah. as well say it. Um, yeah. Well, it's a good, a good spell to start with early on in the game because it can give you a nice defensive zone. Let's see if it works. This is true, but uh, my uh, monsters will all also have to take another route if I make a wall. Um, well, with the, with the magic wood, you have to place the trees... Um, at least with one space between them, so you can't ah, make a solid wall. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Let's try this. <sighs> I I suck as a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back to wizard school. Well, it's not a big problem at this stage in the game. You're not safe. Uh, you're not uh, vulnerable to attack straight away. Now, I've got to be a little bit worried about your 
skeleton. Let's see what spell I can cast. I know. I think I will also have a skeleton. Ah, darn it. Now he has undead creatures as well, which means my skeleton is in danger not only from the wizard's spells, but from the skeleton itself. Now if I move over here, he will be able to attack me. If I attack this one, he will be able to attack me anyway. Uh, but I believe he's trying to bait me over there, so... It's kind of like poker, but not. Much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I really don't have a lot of monster spells. Well, we could try this, of course. And fail. I am so unlucky with these. You, sir, are going here. I'm just going for it. There we go. Oh, I already killed my goblin. Now I'll try and get some revenge with my skeleton attacking your skeleton. 75%. Ah, no. Yeah. Skeletons are quite good at attack, but they're pretty frail. So, so that was pawn eats getting... pawn eats pawn. Yes, yeah, so I now need to consider what I can summon to build my forces. I know, let us try a spider. Now let's try to throw off Julian's strategy by talking about the game. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, oh, now I haven't seen that before. Yeah, giant spider. This will cast a web on oh. creatures in close combat. Sticking no, them no, down. no, 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 no. Um, now, I have read something rather intriguing mm -hmm. uh, on the Kickstarter page. Right. Now, the players will start as wizards, but the wizards have rather um, big intentions of becoming demigods and gods in the Absolutely, end. Absolutely, yes. What does that mean? Well, it, uh, it means quite a lot, because as a god, you have certain powers to bestow blessings on your followers, uh, certain benefits and bonuses in, in battles, resurrections, for example, when you're exploring realms, uh, some minor buffs and abilities that you can give. But of course you have to attract followers. And the demigods, which are in the rank below you, organize guilds which players can join. And each guild has to declare its uh, loyalty to one of the gods of the realms of chaos and so with this sort of hierarchical structure you as a god have to build your influence over the realms of chaos and um, over the other gods so how does that work how do you climb the uh, ladder toward godhood it is a long and um, difficult path for sure you have to start off by attempting to become a wizard lord. Let me just summon my magic bow. Okay, I've got it. So let's, oh, let's give him my wizard range combat attack, which is very, very useful in many situations. So to become a wizard lord, you need to do well by leveling up your wizard, or do well in multiplayer, uh, or do well in collecting and building artifacts. And as a wizard lord, you can be a, a um, in control of a region inside a realm for other players to encounter. Uh, when you're offline. And if you do reasonably well at that, you can progress to become a Wizard King. And as a Wizard King, you can actually then create your own realm. So you can define the map and the, and the layout of the uh, towns and cities and positions of the NPCs and so on. And you can place challenges, traps and rewards in various places. And players will rate your, your realm according to how much fun they had there. And if you do quite well at being a Wizard King, you can then be promoted to be a demigod. Yes. Oh, you've got your centaur, right? And as a demigod, you are then in control of a guild, which I mentioned before, and you need to try and recruit other players and improve the guild rankings. And if you improve the guild rankings sufficiently well, you may well then qualify to be a god. So it's a rather complex and uh, social experience to get yeah, to godhood. There's there's quite a, an involved social system involved. So you said that uh, the player can actually design realms? Yes. Or how, I thought they were procedurally generated. They are, but if you're a wizard king, you can design your own. So ah. um, when you're exploring realms, you'll see that some of them are generated and some of them are created by wizard kings. 
and you know you can choose which which you want to enter. My spider is just uh, stuck your center in a web, by the way, and my skeleton will bear down on your wizard. Oh, that is horrible. I am going to also summon. Let's try summoning a unicorn. Oh no! Ah, succeeded. As a lord of chaos, I'm opposed to unicorns of any shape or color of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, I don't have... Hmm. So, you have to do something before either my spider or my skeleton gets to you. Now, I cannot throw a bolt at your spider. Is that due to line of sight because of my Apparently centaur? you don't have line of sight, okay. so you have to move to the side somewhere. But that would be that spider can move quite far. Let's see if I can see yeah. that. Movement three, so he can yeah, go here, fine. here, and here. So there is no way I can escape it unless I go all the way to the south. Then you can be attacked by my skeleton, so that might not be a good idea either. <sighs> it's a bad, bad situation. Let's see if this works. I probably won't work, but let's try it. Yes! I got a magic sword. I'm still in uh, trouble. Your centaur managed to free itself from... Oh, excellent. Oh, that. yes! I've completely forgot to use the centaur, or did it not uh, have an action? He he may or may not have, depending on whether he was engaged in combat to the uh, spider. But let's see what I can do next. Now, my spider can attack your centaur. Let's just try that, see if I can web him again. Yes, I ah, darn it! My skeleton can attack your wizard. Now, I've got a good chance of actually killing you here, let's see, 39 percent. Oh, I don't imagine. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't work out quite so well to <laughs> that, but I think we're somewhat distracted by asking lots of very challenging questions. <laughs> that was good. I was very unlucky with uh, with spell casting, but that is yeah. no excuse for poor strategy on my part. Yeah, I would have perhaps mixed in a few more illusions at the start of the game if I were you. But, um, well, we'll the see. centaur was an illusion, but that was. Oh, it. was he? Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, <laughs> he wasn't worrying me too much. I must admit. <laughs> yeah. So let's see what we have. We have quite a few summon spells. We have this, which is nice. Uh, we have zombies as well. So not bad for a start, I guess. Let's uh, do that. All right. Now, let's see what I've got. Uh, oh dear, I don't have many cheap spells, so so easy spells, I should say. So I'm going to start with a zombie. Oh, I didn't know that. Should have been easy. Should have been easy. Wasn't good. Okay, at least we know he, he tried a real uh, spell, not, uh, not an illusion. Oh, I should end my turn, sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right, let's see. Let's move the zombie forward. There's nothing else we can really do about it. And let's summon a unicorn. Excellent. Very good. Your wizard should ride that at the earliest available opportunity. So, uh, let's say a player becomes a demigod, or even a god. Will he ever... Uh, encounter other players that are of lower rank than him. Yes, of course. Yeah, and you can fight other players of lower rank um, in multiplayer, but it's more likely that they'll they'll be closer to your rank uh, because of the progress you've made through your wizard levels. Mm -hmm. uh, cast a shield. This would be very good to have a shield at this point. Yes, I got it. So that's improved my defense rating substantially. Okay. Right. Let's cast. Actually, let's move these guys first. Let's uh, get onto our unicorn. And That's a good move, yes. Summon a skeleton. Excellent. And then, ah. of course, because I only use the action of uh, my wizard, my unicorn still has an action, so I can move however yep. I like. But I believe we'll go over here. All right. Now, despite the game having no animations, pretty much, um, and just basic placeholders. I have to say, it's bloody fun to play, and not just because of the fact that I'm playing it with Julian Gollop, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> it's 
it is fun, um, but I need to recover my winning streak that I had against you much <laughs> earlier because it is kind of a little bit embarrassing to to be losing so, so easily. <laughs> that was not a winning streak. Uh, that was a trampling. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to try a, a magical attack spell. These are good to use against vulnerable creatures like your zombie because I've got 67 percent chance on this. I don't want to fail to do that. <laughs> Now, okay. when, uh, when a player fights other players or AI, uh, does it matter how overwhelmingly they win? Will that change their XP or...? Well, during a battle you do gain ex experience points and you get them for uh, killing enemy creatures, casting spells, killing enemy wizards, in some cases collecting rare artifacts. So you can build up more XP in a battle if you do well. And um, if you're fighting a particular yes. type of battle, oh, you've got a manageable. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you will get experience points multipliers for all kinds of reasons. In some cases, for some of the equipment you're carrying. So, so you're zombie. saying you will get extra experience for what equipment you equip, or? Yeah, sometimes you get uh, experience points multipliers based on your special ability to your equipment. For example, you might get a. Um, one of the abilities is called, you know, uh, wizard hero ability, and that's if you if you attack creatures directly with your wizard, you will get a an experience point multiplier uh, three times, for example. Uh, but only if you're doing that kind of kind of action. Now let's see what I can do against your skeleton. This is getting a little bit <laughs> crowded, <laughs> difficult because we are talking about crowdfunding after all. There, there is a crowd. Well, that won't help very much because your your guys are undead. I, I need to <laughs> I need to do something that can attack your undead creatures. Let's try this again. It's not a big chance of succeeding, but it's a magical attack which has three different targets. Oh, oh. Yeah, superb! Superb! Attack. Um, I... I I was quite lucky to to actually. <laughs> kill all three of them. I was expecting maybe I might get one or two of them, but so that's, um, uh, that was a magical attack which which has up to three targets and it's normally something I would say for the later stages of a game, but I was a bit desperate then. Well, I would say some nasty things, but I would be struck down by the gods of gaming. <laughs> that was horrible. Right, let's try this. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, a giant. <clears throat> very nice. Very powerful creature. I need to stay away from that one. No, he just wants to hug. That's that's all he wants to do. Um, now, creatures already do have, uh, but not all of them, uh, special abilities, like the spider has the web. Yes. And the manticore can fly over obstacles. Um, how many creatures do you think roughly will be there in the game? How many different creatures? Uh, for our initial release, there will be 24 different creatures. Okay. And there will be um, like 56 additional spells as well. So we have 80 spells altogether in the initial release of the game. But of course, we will be adding to that as we're going along. But those 24 creatures, as you say, will have quite distinctive abilities and um, you know drawbacks. Like for example, your giant is extremely strong. He's a bit vulnerable because he has magic resistance. So that means that uh, all of your magical attacks on the giant will have a high chance of failing. Uh, succeeding. Uh, succeeding? I yeah, thought you said he had magical resistance. His magical resistance is low, sorry. Ah, yeah, oh, right, okay. Ah, I suck. <laughs> okay, so uh, will this giant be able to jump down from level 3 to level 1 height? No, he can't jump okay. that way down. He's going to have to make his way down on... S the steps to either side. So that was a bit of a mistake on my part. Uh, now, these things, uh, which Julian put down, is actually very nice, because if I wanted to get to him, I would have to go through this maze of these trees, and they actually all attack nearby melee creatures. So, yeah. I can't really do a lot there. And once again, I'm being really offensive with my wizard, which is probably a stupid idea. But... Uh, We'll try anyway. Now, I still need to build up my 
creature base. So I'm going to summon a lion. It's a good thing to make you a little bit worried. Okay. Uh, great. Again, escaped animals from the zoo we need to take care of. Um, is there a... Um, um, tranquilizer dart spell anywhere near <laughs> Let's no. see. Okay, I could bluff this and do this. Ah, damn it. It's real. So I just lost my turn with the wizard, but yeah. no worries. I can still move away. And the lion will have to go all the way over here to get to me. Now the giant is a slow lumbering mass of flesh, so I have to keep moving him over there. Of course, these uh, trees will not despawn. They're, uh, they're magical, but they will not despawn until kill, I believe? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. So they are going to hang around. You can attack them. They're very tough. Now, the blob spell would be amazing in this case. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, I don't have it's... it. Now, I would really like to have something to ride on. Let's try summoning a Pegasus and see if that works. I would really like to have... A manticore still alive. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, yes, you're right. I've got a manticore spell. Let's try oh, no. a manticore. Gave ideas. <laughs> um, well, as a Pegasus, a little bit. Uh, the manticore is actually got 53% because we've got a bonus for chaos at the moment. So let's see if we can get that one. Okay, oh, I got a manticore. And I'm betting that's real. Now, how much movement does this guy have? Three. So one, two, three. He still cannot get to my wizard with his lion. No. However, the Manticore can fly, and it also has a ranged attack. So, let's bring Gyu over here. And let's see, do, 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 justice. I could get another Pegasus. I'll try. Or, I could get an Elf, which is ranged. And can do some ranged damage, hopefully. Now you are going to go over here. A little more defensively. Now I'm on the defense. Because he's got way too much over here. And with that I mean the manticore mm -hmm. and the lion. Yeah. So my lion really probably should try and go for your elf. Because you've got a bit of an advantage point out there. So what will happen in uh, player versus player combat or player versus <laughs> AI combat um, when you die? Do you lose any experience? Do you get any penalties? No, I mean, you, you don't. I mean, in the Realm Exploration mode, if you are defeated in battle, you have to um, you have to pay a little bit of gold for your res resurrection at a wizard tower, and that might set you back a little bit in terms of your progress through the realm, uh, and it will cost you a bit of gold, which is the in-game currency, because okay. um, there is an economy in the game as well. Now, let me see what I can do about... Now, as soon as you mentioned economy, I think everybody is screaming, will there be an auction house? No, there'll be okay. no... Um, no, you can trade equipment with, with other players, but the main way that's done is, is within your guild. And it's, uh, it's a, you can trade for, for gold or for other equipment, but it's entirely up to you. And okay. it's, it's not a real money auction house, so mm -hmm. there's no in-app purchases or um, free-to-play mechanism there at all. So the gold is purely stuff that you earn and spend in the game itself. So there will be no microtransactions no. of any sort. You buy no. the game, you have the game, you play it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I'm not feeling very vulnerable at this stage, so I'm going to see... Try casting a... Let's try casting another eagle. This will give you something interesting to, to <sighs> think about. It's going to fail. Oops, hold on. Uh, oops, I've lost my connection with the server. Hold on, let me just reset. <laughs> It's, uh, if you lose connection at the moment, I just have to refresh the browser and log into the server again. Uh, will you still be able to continue with this match? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. yeah it's not a problem. It, uh, and basically, just download the entire data for the game again and, and recreate okay. it, which, I've, which I managed to do. Uh, except I'm still stuck. What can I do here? Uh, Just refresh again. Well, we can call it a win for me and uh, start another match, of course. 
I'm just wondering whether the server's stuck, actually. Yes, I think it is. Is it? Yeah, because I'm not able to do anything at the moment. Let me see if I can move. Well, I can move my giant. Unless that's only client side. Is it your is it your turn at the moment? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. Well, you, you do your your turn. That should be okay. Okay. Well, I'll just uh, I'll just end my turn without doing anything because you lost yours. Uh, there. You should have control now. Hopefully. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> You've got a bug which I don't know how to fix. You ended your turn, did you? Yes. Ah. Okay. Let me try logging in again. Okay. No, I think it's something has gone wrong on the server side with the game. I'm gonna have to abort it. I'm gonna have to <sighs> abort Darn it. this one, I'm afraid. And I was this close to winning. <laughs> I'm bluffing. I'm bluffing. Um Oh, but this was a great look at the game. Uh did we forget to mention anything? Um particular about the We've mechanics. We've gone through a hell of a lot in terms of what the game is all about. Um, we've mentioned the single player mode and the progression through the ranks and the equipment and so on. Um, I mean it might be worth saying that you can have games with up to six players mm -hmm. and any or all of those could be uh, AI controlled if you wish. <laughs> so that's uh, three versus three you can have three versus three, two versus two versus two, or you can, if you want, to tr play co-op. Um, you know, three versus uh, three human players versus yes. three AI. You can Excellent. do that as well. So you can set up set up matches, set up battles how you want them. Uh, what about um, co-op? When we said that you can play co-op, can you play co-op through the entire game? For example, if you have a friend. Uh, yes, you can. If you go through the realms of chaos mode, every battle you can. Um, have a friend to help you. The thing is though you have to share the rewards with that player. Mm -hmm. So your progress individually through your wizard levels and, and equipment and stuff, you have to share all the equipment and gold you, you okay. get. So um, but it still can be can be very useful to do that because um, you benefit from a bit of synergy between the spells, because a lot of spells can can be used to help both you and your teammate at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I also think that a lot of players today are looking for those uh, two-player co-op games. Yeah, um, personally, I, I really love co-op games. Yes. I love lots of different co-op modes because it gives you uh, an element of, of strategy where you're trying to negotiate with your, your teammate uh, what is the best thing to do, what's the worst thing to do. And you know, it's, this can really help you build your game style and you know it can can be complementary to the game style of your 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 teammate in in a battle, and uh, uh, and that can be really good fun. Okay, excellent. Now, um, I do believe that's it. I think we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, I will be again putting the description. Uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, the links for the Kickstarter campaign and the official page for Chaos Reborn down below. Please go and check them out, support them. If you like this video, this was uh, amazing fun. And uh, Julian Golub, I would like to thank you a lot for joining me here. It was an absolute honor and pleasure. And well, uh, I wish you the best for the game. Thank you very much.